were one of the lucky ones who met the love of your life in high school, I'm convinced that all of us that are still single and dating right now are going to date the following three types of men at least once in our life. The first man will tell you, oh, baby, I love you so much. I want to spend all this time with you. Like, I miss you so much when you're not around. But he'll never actually make an effort to hang out with you. He has time to hang out with his guy friends every single day, but can only spare one day a week to hang out with you. This is a guy that you usually date in your earlier years before you know better. The second guy is someone who has a lot of qualities that you love. You see great potential. He treats you well. He's a gentleman. You like everything about him, but you don't actually like him. Something is missing. The chemistry is missing. Some sort of spark is missing. Mentally, your brain is like, I should be madly in love with him, but I'm not. This guy, you just got to let go. I won't lie. Third guy hurts the most. This is the man who you more than anything wanted it to work out. This is the guy that you will think about forever as what if. What if he was the one? Cue the one by Taylor Swift. That's the guy that I'm talking about, you know? You really became a person that would do anything for him and he still didn't want you. Oh, it hurts hurt so bad because I literally went through this last year. I feel like those are the three tropes of men that most women have dated. And they've truly been learning events for all of us. I can if you want a man, respectfully, that is on you. But here's my pro tip, okay? Make his life better. Do not make his life easy. Be the enrichment exercise in his enclosure, okay? Give him a sense of accomplishment every time he sees you. Make him feel useful. Make his life better. Do not make it easy. Do not do his laundry. Do not do like that, okay? Why? Because men bond through vasopressin. Vasopressin is a hormone that is released in the brain only through complex problem solving. It is why they're like this with their besties and don't give a fuck about you, okay? Because they're solving problems with their boys and they're just laid up pillow talking with you. That is how women bond. Oxytocin is how women bond. That is why you get caught with the man you're sleeping with and he's like, yada yada, I don't give a shit. Like, why would he? Babe, you're not in his head. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. <laughs> if you do not know about the thumb trick, how are you surviving in this modern dating world? Okay, I'm kind of just kidding, but today I'm going to explain to you what the thumb trick is and how it will literally pull any person you want. So the key to this is you guys have to be already holding hands. If you're confused on how to get to this step, my account is the perfect place to start. I make dating and flirting advice videos like five times a day. Anyway, when you're holding their hand, you're going to slowly start tracing your fingers up and down their hand. The key to this is that you need to do it slowly, delicately. This is going to give them like the chills in a good way. Next. Here is where the fun comes in. You are going to take your thumb, hence the thumb trick, and you are going to slowly start like making circles against their skin on their hand. This is going to send them into orbit. This will not only make them like turned on physically, but this will turn them on mentally. It's just such an affectionate thing to do. Okay, I have so many more tips and tricks, so fall if you want a part two. God, Karen, you are so stupid. <laughs> Where are all the good men that don't cheat? Where are all the good men that still respect women to understand that they don't deserve to be played with, lied to, and manipulated? Where are all the good men that want to prioritize their family, their girlfriends, and the people around them that matter? Where are all the good men that know the sacrifice of a woman when she's at home with the kids or she's making a house a home and they appreciate it? Where are all the men that are happy to go to work every single day knowing that the home and the house that they built is because they sacrificed time away from their children? Where are all the good men that are trying to balance work, a romantic relationship, their kids, trying to do all the right things and still feel like they're falling short? Where are all the good men that understand that women can be crazy, but you love them anyway? Where are all the good men that understand that things are not always going to be easy, but they're not going to go out and cheat or be out in the club to fill their ego instead of making it work within their relationship? Where are all the good men that still have integrity? They do exactly what they say they're going to do and they never fall short. Where are these men? Because according to women, there are no good ones left. Okay, bye.
I really, really want to discuss why this drizzle drizzle movement is really important. Because the men who are playing into this thing, right? What they're trying to show women and what women are not getting is how lazy, <laughs> um, entitled, and uh, selfish so many women are in relationship. And how so many women actually have such high expectations of men that they date that they do not have of themselves. Most of these women who have these high expectations of men to pay for things, to have resources, have actually never built something themselves. And many of the men who are like the top creators in this category are men who have built something, which is why they can so strongly stand in the humor of it uh, uh, confidently. See, we as women have just lived in this culture for so long that we have we don't recognize what was built before we came in to the culture that was created by men. No, 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 no. The reason that we could even attain the civil rights that men have is because of the men who worked to create those civil rights. And absolutely, women have contributed to that but they built it on the backs of what was created before then. And we need to appreciate that. We have to have appreciation for it. Otherwise, what we are doing is we are simply being little girls whining and complaining rather than actually being creators of the culture, which is what we need to do as women right now. We need to step up and become culture creators. But most women don't want to actually acknowledge their responsibility for the responsibility for their own lives, the responsibility for the culture, the environment that has been created for a world to thrive. And until you really take responsibility for your own life and the world that you've created for yourself, it doesn't really matter what the men do because we are the ones that set the tone for everything, including relationship, including culture, including standards, which starts with the standards we have for ourselves. Game up.